Property is never going to be 100% passive, but the systems that you can put in place to make yeah. it a lot more passive. Whilst you still have the passion, have the hunger, have the time and the drive, you're going to make your money work harder for you if you're working it. Interest rates coupled with changes in taxation when you own property in a residential, which has made it a lot less efficient. So some buy-to-let portfolios that are in people's personal names now are actually costing the money from a cash flow perspective. Whilst interest rates have gone up, rents have also, particularly in London, raised sufficiently to cover that void rental okay. market in terms of my own personal experience mm. it's the strongest it's been in a long long time if i put a room online on a wednesday i might have a hundred messages by friday so you've seen examples where people are saying okay you want to rent this property almost like send the cv almost like why should i rent to you because they're not making new land they're printing money and our population is yeah. growing but we yeah. live on an island there's a yeah. finite resource of yeah. land being up to date with current legislation and also potential changes if you can preempt an earlier adopter in a market those people always make the most money and in business a lot of the time you make your money from seeing things that other people miss but one thing they're talking about bringing it's been talked about and it's gone through parliament now it's looking like it's going to come into place which is the you're not defined by where you, where you come from yeah. and i think that's a big message that i always yeah. want to tell people like like you have to be able to be uncomfortable yeah. like be comfortable with being uncomfortable when you grow up in ends you don't realize it when you're confident but you have an audacity to do things that ordinarily most people wouldn't have been to do. Uh, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. We've got a special guest in the building, Kazi. How are you doing today, bro? Good, thank you, brother. Better than last time. Remember last yeah. time I was mad sick. Yeah, you're mad sick. You know what? Nobody even knew that, though. Nah, it did not come across on the episode at all. You know, sometimes when you're like, mm. ah, cool, i got to hold it down, i got to hold it down. Yeah. The second I left, remember, it was cold as mm. well. You know, when you go outside and I could feel the chill to my yeah. bones. I don't think I left my bed for like five <laughs> days after that. <laughs> no, you know what? I appreciate you for definitely coming down because a lot of people that just cancelled, nah, cancelled nah, it, but nah. you like, you I stuck to your word. That's a big thing, you know, like sticking to your word and actually mm. doing what you say you're going to do. Across the board, man, it's important. Yeah, it's very important. So how's the year started for you? It's good, you know, like, so I've I've been diversifying a little bit in terms of what I've been doing. Um, January was a little bit slow. Mm. It's, it's a weird market in the property space okay. um, in that, like, you know, there's a big gap between what sellers' expectations are versus, you know, where the market potentially is and what mm. buyers want to pay and where it's potentially going to be okay. in the next, you know, anywhere from six to 24 months when you're going to finish a project. So it was at auctions at, in January, sort of January, and I'd sort of shortlisted at two or three different auctions, probably anywhere from five to six different properties and across the board end up winning none of them. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's just because I'm someone that, you know, I live in the numbers. So once I get, like I said, look, this is my max bid, even for that extra, you know, 5,000, which could only be like 1%, I'm saying, nah, I've got to really? stick with the numbers. Okay. Um, but then February, February started a lot better. Uh, last week, uh, was successful on four properties at auction. Wow. That's so yeah, so four. crazy change. So yeah, I'm wow. going to say, and that, that's the thing, like mm. life and business is swings and roundabouts. Mm. It's always going to be, you're going to have quiet bits and have bits where you do yeah. really well. Yeah, that's mad. So give the people a reminder, who is Kazi actually, before we like deep dive okay, into, okay. into profit. So I'm Kazi, aka Kazim Ali Balogan. Mm. Or more commonly, when people see me outside, it's like, "Yo, ain't you that property guy?" Like that's the, that's the, <laughs> that's what they say. Yeah. That's the go-to, man. Like, I know you're in the YouTube's, like, yeah, yeah, the YouTube's, man. That's me. I'm the YouTube's. Um, but yeah, I'm a property developer, yeah. property investor. I would now say, off the back of you know, over the last couple of years, I've I've had to come to terms with the fact that I'm an influencer of sorts in the property space, okay. as well as um, you know, an educator as well. So like that, they, I guess, mm. like the sort of four parts to my you know my current sort of um wheelhouse yeah but i focus on property investment and development say development more so obviously with development you're you know mm. buying assets with a goal to add value whether you're retaining or whether you're selling them on um but i've done pretty much everything in property from you know from doing rent to rent in the airbnb space as well as in the hmo space sort of new builds conversions renovations uh commercial conversions wow. airspace development so little bits of everything done a lot man mm. 
as we as we as we talked about in the last episode. If you haven't listened to the last episode, defo listen to the last episode because like Kaz like shared so much, so many gems, so many gems. So, okay, so I wanted to start with this because I saw you. I had Alfred on actually mm -hmm. about a month or so ago, yeah. and I didn't even know that he was out in Dubai for his mastermind. Do you actually join the mastermind or do you no, just no, come so after? I was just in Dubai, so okay. outside of like I'm in Dubai at the moment, probably around once a month i'm in and out of there i've got a business over there yeah um so i have to like sort of touch base quite regularly it mm. does run itself but there's going to be things that i mm. do have to do so a lot of the time when people are in dubai it's an opportunity mm. for me to connect because i've got okay. a little bit more free time mm. you know dubai is a much smaller place like mm. dubai is realistically for those that know london is the size of lewisham so <laughs> to, imagine, to be fair you're not a lot you're not wrong so if it's you're the nice j that's literally the size of it so yeah. if you know the size of that borough if someone says you're in Lewisham, it's very easy. Okay, I'm going to meet you. Mm. Whereas if someone says they're in North London, you're he's like, yeah, ah, you're nice. Yeah, that's longer than Ah, you know? <laughs> oh, come on, congestion, <laughs> traffic, all of these reasons. So I catch up with a lot of people. But yeah, it was really good to see, you know, what he's done in his space um, with his mastermind. Obviously, mm. I spoke to some of the, um, the people that have been on it. Mm. They had a really good time. They were really inspired. Mm. Um, some of them did some amazing things. Some of them mm. obviously on the cusp of doing amazing things. Yeah. So that was good. Yeah. Do you get any, like, insights from, like, obviously your conversations with, you know, being around, I guess? Because there was, from what he was saying, there's obviously a very successful people there very wealthy people mm -hmm. there. So I'm, I'm sure you must have got some kind of insights and yeah, your yeah. conversations. So I had, I had a couple of connections. Um, and I think it's always good to be in a room with different people, particularly when you're in a different space to you. Like, mm. I think it's very easy to sort of isolate yourself and say, look, I'm in finance. So I'm just only mm. going to be around finance people. Yeah. But then you kind of only gain insight and gain, you know, mm. you know, I guess, inspiration from those people. Whereas he had people from different spaces, different walks of life, yeah. people that had, you know, built out big sales courses, people that had done online learning and definitely, you know, kept in touch with some of those people. Mm. Um, and some of those people have been very helpful in, in kind of some of the, the yeah. things that I've been doing as well. Okay, sick, 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 sick. So how's the business going in Dubai? Yeah, business in Dubai is cool, man. Yeah. Business is good. So um, we started as like a packaging company. Okay. So we were supplying like luxury packaging for oh, different brands bad. out there. Um, you know, some some good, very well established brands. Mm. Your equivalent of like, you know, the, the very well known like yellow Saint uh, Sainsbury's for mm. yellow Selfridges bag or like Harris was those types okay. of packaging we started with and then mm. building those relationships we then went into event management. Okay. So doing like events for some big clients out mm. there, like Sephora, Coach, to name a few. Okay. Um and yeah, just just kind of mm. trying to create like a stable mm. sort of um you know stable sort of run of, of what we're going to be doing yeah. over the next year is it like white label bags and then so that will put their brands on top so or? we actually give them the complete finished product oh, really? so, you know, and, and obviously these these brands are ordering yeah. them in the tens of thousands at a okay. time oh know, man so sephora will say oh they want a bag a bag yeah so no so we don't actually it. do so we do events for sephora so they oh. might have an event that they're doing oh, that's crazy and we would effectively put that together so they might have a new product launch mm. and we would bring together it might mm. be like the makeup artist it might be the lighting it might oh, be you know they might have an, a certain aesthetics it might yeah. be the beach theme so we might like rent a space for them where we bring them the, you know the sand the this mm. the that to give it the oh, feel man. of what they want to do wow that's crazy that's so different to property man how you yeah. how do you do you know what it's <laughs> it just that. made sense like i think yeah. the main thing is just understanding mm. where there's a gap in the market okay and i think we're able to see that you know there's some really good people that weren't necessarily getting the promotions okay. in you know, in, in the industries they were currently in. So we brought them on boards, found a structure that worked for us and worked for them that was mutually yeah. beneficial. They already had an established contact yeah. base, brought that over to us and it's it's been, yeah, it's just worked really well. I mean, okay. sort of first for first month's trading yeah. for 2024 as, as was, went really well. Mm. So obviously we're just trying to replicate that and set that as a minimum mm. standard for the rest of the year. Okay, mad. Do you think you would relocate to the back? I'll ask, I'll ask Alfred the same thing. So I think for me, like when people talk about what I want from life, mm. I could want to relocate to Dubai. I don't at the moment, okay. but I always want to plan and work in advance. So mm. I'm set up, so I've got my residency out there. Mm. You know, I've got a car out there, I've got a place okay. out there. So yeah. it's like, if I want to go, I'm just playing for my flight and I could just go over there. Okay. And at the point in time where if I ever did want to go and move to Dubai, mm. it's literally just a decision because I've got a business, I've got cash flow, I've got everything that's already happening over there. And it's just a case of where I want to be. Yeah. And I think a lot of the time when we, we look at, you know, when people ask the question, like, what do you want? What's next? 
we try, tie it to like monetary values. Mm. But for me, I just tie it to the flexibility to do what I want when I want. Mm. So I try and build an eco structure around myself that can mm. facilitate that. Okay. You know what? Let's let's stay with that because actually I had a couple of questions that I wanted to ask you about that, right? And um, you know, in terms of like we we did the podcast just over a year ago, mm -hmm. right? So how do you I guess how do you feel like you've you've grown in like the last year and what do you feel like you've learned? I think self-awareness, like mm. 2023, like was quite an up and down year just in terms of yeah. how how I felt, you know, I think at that time, like taking on maybe too much. Mm. I think I suffered with anxiety for a little while. Okay. So I lost a lot of weight in like oh, a short crazy. space of time. And I think just understanding who I am more as a person, mm. be that through just um, taking the time to actually self-reflect, mm. be that through therapy. And I think that's really helped me grow. And I think the more comfortable you are as you, mm. the more successful you can be as you. And I think yeah. working on yourself is just as important as looking after your customers, working on the business, mm. and even looking after friends and family. Like if you're not, like if you're the nucleus of your own happiness you have to make sure that you have that stable base yeah yeah it's great it's crazy because like people will look at you from the outside rah because he's doing all these deals yeah. 6k followers and i feel like people feel like especially somebody with online presence that they're fallible they don't see like sometimes yeah. some of the struggles behind it mm -hmm. you know they just kind of see people and think oh yeah they can just do anything it's just easy but you, you know sometimes to, you can talk to the most successful people yeah. in the world and they'll tell you, they might tell you they're not happy. They might tell mm. you they're struggling with stuff. They might be dealing with all sorts of different mm. issues. And I think it's important to remember that, like, mm. you know, that when you are looking at somebody, just because they might at a certain point in time be doing quote unquote better than you because you think they're more financially stable, it doesn't mean that they're doing better holistically. Mm. There could be all sorts of different, you know, issues that people are dealing with or stuff that people are struggling with. Um, yeah. And obviously you have to be blessed for where you are. And you've always got to, you know, be thankful for mm. for whatever you do have and the blessings that you have. Yeah. But you know, we're all we're all dealing with our own different things, and you just got to find a way to to navigate. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay, cool. So, do you feel like you know, obviously, in your pursuit, like to you know, get success, do you feel like that's had an impact on like relationships, friends? Because obviously, a lot of people and you know, partners. Do you feel like there's obviously had an impact and do you think that there's had to be some sacrifice there involved as well? Yeah, like you, the most finite resource is time. Mm. You can't buy time. You mm. can't like you can. So it's just there. Like you only have 24 hours in the day. Um, and obviously at different points in time, you're focusing on different things. So whether it be like relationships mm. with friends, like romantic relationships yeah. with family, that there's always going to be an element of sacrifice because there's only so much of you to go around. And I think obviously as you grow, there's like a common like saying that like, people are like, ah, oh, like he's changed or she's changed. Mm. But like, there's that Jay-Z line of like, do you think we work this hard to stay the same? Mm. Like, so, hundred. so uh, it's that balance of changing for the good. Mm. And I think everything is okay in moderation. Change is okay in moderation. You know, working hard is okay in moderation. Taking time off is okay in moderation. But just like, I definitely like, I feel like my buzzword for today, mm. today is we're going to call this a session. We're even going to call it a podcast. Mm. Today's therapy okay. session with yourself okay. Okay, cool. is um, is balance. Okay, cool. I love that. I love that. I love the fact that you say balance. Cause I, that's that's something I always try and preach mm. to people that balance is, yeah, is, is, is super, is super important because, I don't I think too much of anything is is not good, right? Yeah. Water's good for you, but too much of it you drown, too right? Much of anything <laughs> is like you you can't, like the life is about balance. Like your body is built on balance. Mm. Just like you said, sweet potato can be amazing. Mm. You can't eat it every day, day and out, and that's all you eat. Mm. It's the same with anything and, and like, you know, even eating really yeah. healthily, sometimes you need the occasional sweet or the occasional something just to treat yeah. yourself or just to kind of feel a little bit different. So I yeah. think you know, balance is how we're built. Like, mm. if you look at our, like, you know, biologically, mm. we need balance to survive. Hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay, so obviously, you you, you talked to earlier about you know, like the goal. I don't know if you were saying for yourself that the goal is no re no longer really about making money. I want to touch on that because obviously you've made a lot of money last year, years before in your career, right? As a, a property developer slash investor, right? What what do you feel like is the ultimate goal for you now now that you've done that? Like what's kind of like next? Do you feel? The thing is like because 
money is infinite. Mm. Like, so if you work, if you starting out and you can make 500 pounds, you can see how you can make a thousand. Yeah. You can make a thousand pounds like a month. You can see how you can make 5,000. You can make 5,000. You can see 10. Mm. You can see 10. You can see 50. Mm. And I think so that's always going to spiral and it's yeah. going to spiral so exponentially that if you're just chasing a monetary goal, you're just always going to be looking at what's next, what's next, what's next. Whereas if you're happy, you're just happy. Mm. Like there's, you know, there's that level of happiness where you're like, well, I'm just happy. Like mm. I'm just chilling. Like whatever it is you find that makes you happy. So like right now, like I, I felt like I find random sports that I like to play. So like paddle is my okay. new thing. Like okay. I'm mad into okay. paddle. Like I'll cancel a mad meeting to be like, if the boys say, yo, we got paddle on a Tuesday. <laughs> I'll be like, listen, bro, you got to move that, man. There's paddle on a Tuesday. The boys paddle is serious. Yeah. Like, we got our own in-house little league. Oh, my gosh. If you miss funny. it, you know what I mean? So it's like, I think in terms of the question, like, what does, like, success and sort of stuff like that look and how do you quantify it? It's just, yeah, obviously, mm. money can almost indirectly buy you happiness through buying the flexibility to do what you want. Yeah. Because if you're not making money, you don't have the flexibility to go and play paddle on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. But it, there's always going to be like a, a marginal, you like my marginal return at some point on the money. That at some point, a certain amount of money is only going to make you a little bit happier. Mm. Whereas maybe a certain amount of time will make you a lot happier, or just yeah. going for a nice dinner will make you a lot happier. Mm. And I think just that's really a, understanding good perspective, how honest, it works yeah. for you mm. should understand where you push your efforts towards. Mm. That's a good perspective. That's a good perspective. And it sounds like you learn. You learned a lot of that last year. You're learning yeah, more yeah, of that no, in I learned, I learned 2024. A lot, yeah. I learned a lot. Um, yeah, I, th I think we're always learning. Yeah. And that's the other thing about when we look at this whole concept of where you want to be. Yeah. Like, whether you're doing great in your field, you're mm. still learning. You can learn from the person who's a couple steps ahead of you. Yeah. You can learn from the person who's 10 steps behind you just because of one little soundbite they give you. And you think, you know what? That makes mad sense. Mm. Like, cause I'm fortunate enough that, you know, with me working with people that are at the beginning of their journey and sometimes they say something to me and I'm like, yeah, no, I'm mad to hear that. Like, you know what I mean? They just kind of yeah. can change your perspective a little bit. Yeah. 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 Cause I'm, I'm sure like, obviously we're going to talk about it. You, you come across a lot of people that want to get into property mm -hmm. investing and because they don't, let's say have biases, mm -hmm. They think in uh, they can think in a different way because yeah. they they've not been shaped yet. Yeah. When you think like that, okay, that's that's cool. That's interesting. That's interesting. So okay, so let's let's talk about property. Obviously, when we when we spoke, you know, you were buying property, renovating it, and selling it on. So basically, like property flipping. Is that what you're still that's kind of still, doing? Yeah, that's what still my doing? my primary focus. Yeah. I think, and I bounce in between saying oh, I want to buy assets to hold and create like mm. more passive cash flow and property is never going to be a hundred percent passive hmm. but the systems that you can put in place to make yeah. it a lot more passive there's still going to be you know your variable costs hmm. i.e your boiler breaks down i you have a tenant move out unexpectedly yeah. or someone doesn't pay rent or all hmm. of these things that could happen or you know interest rates go up exponentially yeah. as well so these things can happen so it's never going to be completely passive mm. or it's never going to be like a typical investment vehicle like investing yeah. in like a government bond but in comparison to where you've got to go out there and like find a property, flip it, manage the builders, etc., you know, your, your rental portfolio is mm. going to be as passive as you get in the property space. Mm. Um, and I've been bouncing between, oh, do I want cash flow or mm. do I, and it, sometimes it could change from how I wake up in the morning. Is it? The the I wake up. <laughs> okay. But but I am still, I'm, I'm known yeah. very much in my space as the guy that yeah. you know, preaches on, on flipping property okay. whilst you have the energy to do so. Yeah. Because whilst you still have the passion, have the hunger, have the mm. time and the drive, you're going to make your money work harder for you if you're working it. Mm. Whereas when, you know, you've just got your money sitting down, it's like there's a predetermined amount of how much money your own money, your own investment can yeah. make for you. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Do you feel like you've had to adjust any like that strategy of flipping in some way. I mean, look, so, so a lot of people have spoken recently on the market, um, mm. predominantly around the core issue of interest rates. Yeah, that's... And interest thing. rates coupled with um, changes in taxation mm. for when you own property in a residential name. Okay, I didn't know that there was tax changes. Man. So there's tax changes. So they're basically that previously, you know, you get a buy-to-let property and you're renting that property out for £1,000 a month mm. and your mortgage is £700. Mm. So you make £300 profit because mm. you claim the expense. Yeah. 
as of 2024 and it was like scaled down, but you can no longer claim the interest element as an expense in your residential name. Okay. There's like a, a calculation where you can claim a certain amount, mm. but you can't claim the full amount anymore, which means that you're paying tax on the entire thousand pounds wow. minus some allowed deductions, mm. which has made it a lot less efficient. So some buy to let portfolios that are in people's personal names now are actually costing the money from a mm. cash flow perspective, they may still be making the money mm. from the property price going up from capital appreciation, but on a monthly basis, if mm. you know that was a large portion of your income, yeah, it's going to make owning that property no longer sustainable. Mm. Coupled with that, there was yeah. also rises in interest rates. That again, if interest rates go up, there you're even a limited company, they are the majority of your monthly fixed costs. So, a rise that you know, interest rates people were getting interest rates as low as. 1.8 percent mm. um at the peak some people were being offered deals mm. that you know starting with a seven so seven percent so massive yeah. jumps in what they're paying monthly which made it sort of less affordable but what has happened is because there's been a slight exodus of some of the more casual buy to let landlords that owned in their yeah. personal name coupled with the fact that interest rates going up made build to rent accommodation from like some of the larger home builders mm. less viable because they would have to leave more money in meant that less rental homes were coming to the market okay and just from a basic supply and demand model mm. the less homes there are mm. the more competition there is the more people will pay so for uh, a lot of property investors whilst they found whilst interest rates have gone up rents have also particularly in london mm. raised sufficiently to kind of cover and cover that void okay so it hasn't really if i said look from 2022 to now mm. my monthly expenses might have gone up by five thousand pounds okay but my monthly income from property has mm. probably gone up by the same amount okay because of rental prices yeah. going up in that same period okay oh mad 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 i thought i thought property prices were going down but it's like it so, looks it's so look these are bad. the what, what i was talking about yeah. just there wasn't mm. property prices mm. that was the rental market okay the rental so that was okay the, the rental, rental market, market so the different. rental okay. market is probably yeah and again you'd have to kind of go and get the, the yeah. correct stats and yeah. like an agency will be able to give you a lot more detail mm. but for me just in terms of my own personal experience mm. it's the strongest it's been in a long long time okay. if not ever like i'm talking if I put a, a room online, like a mm. ensuite room, mm. and it, there are you know good prices, like from a landlord's perspective, yeah. you know nine hundred pounds a month. Mm. If I put that online on a on a Wednesday, I might have a hundred messages by Friday. That's insane. So yeah, it's like so you've seen examples where people are saying, "Look, you have to basically almost like okay, you want to rent this property, almost like send a CV almost. Mm. Like why should I rent to you? Because the landlords oh have that God. much choice because of demand." yeah london london is a different is a different place though like the demand here is like it's never it's like it don't go anywhere because they're not making new land <laughs> that's true that's true like you know, yeah they're, they're printing money yeah there's you know people there's more people coming our population is yeah. growing but we yeah. live on an island there's a yeah. finite resource of yeah. land and to you know the, in uh, london you know there's a very limited amount of space mm. yeah there's you know more sort of larger sort of tower blocks and skyscrapers mm. growing up in larger apartments but there's still a limited amount of space. Okay, mad. I didn't realise, so it sounds like you kind of like started holding some of your property because I swear when we spoke last year, you were not, at that point you were like, nah, yeah, I'm no, not so doing I, that. I've always <laughs> held, I've always held some assets. Yeah. I mean, I think it just makes sense from a security perspective. Yeah. It's like, you know, holding property is like kind mm. of almost like, well, my, my, I can't go broke fund. Yeah. Because worst case scenario the equity is still in the property yeah you just sell it but yeah in terms of growing a portfolio i haven't been actively trying to grow my portfolio of properties mm. um, and yeah so flipping for me has still been the primary yeah you know, yeah mad so how many how many properties do you flip in 2023 if you know i couldn't even tell you how many i flipped in 2023 but uh, it was that much it wasn't it was not like it's that much i just can't think the exact sort of exact sort of number um okay. but this year we're trying to you're trying to ramp things up definitely this you're trying year. to do more than last year yeah i'm trying to definitely okay. do more than last year okay. so i think i was saying i want to hopefully by the end of february mm. i want to have bought six this this month mm. um see how they go and then hopefully just sort of mm. use that to tail into the next month and see what we can do in terms of volume okay so wow so, i mean you already got four um so you said you bought four right and then i guess what's like when, when you're like renovating what are you trying to do because i remember last year you talked about a few projects which was it was very interesting so you're talking about i think you 
I think it was commercial to residential. I can't remember I where you were doing, like splitting them into apartments and stuff like that. I think that. it was yeah. residential to residential. Yeah. So okay. typically buying yeah. family homes, uh, like four bedroom family mm. units, a lot of them in the Croydon borough mm. um, and basically getting planning to convert them from anywhere to sort of three to five units. Yeah. Um, so this wasn't demolition. This was a conversion. So with extensions, uh, mm. with loft conversions and to create enough space to get anywhere from three to five units. Okay. In terms of the numbers, the uplift can work really well mm. because it's not as expensive as new builds. Yeah. So the capital committed isn't as much. The other good thing about those types of mm. schemes is say, you don't have to rush it. Mm. You can, you know, you could buy a unit, could buy it on the basis of, look, I'm going to rent the property out mm. for maybe one or two years, you know, do do planning. Um, say you buy somewhere for yeah. £550,000 to include your stamp duty. You know, day one, you might put in 150000 You're going to have mm. no cost of finance because straight away it's going to be rented out. You might do planning over the next over the next sort of um, year because mm. sometimes you know with back and forth it, it can take a little bit longer than you yeah. would hope yeah and then at the end of the term of your mortgage just say you've got a two-year mortgage you could then switch with yeah. planning to a bridging product with a development facility mm. so because you've got planning your gdv so your gross development value mm. of that property has gone from maybe five hundred thousand to okay. 1. 1.5 okay. million because of the planning but no, the GDV is what yeah. it's going to be worth when it's okay, done. Okay, when it's done. So okay, so that's so like they might value, value okay. it as it with planning. That maybe yeah. you get an extra one hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, but based on it being finished, it's going to be worth one point five million. Okay, so a funder would then say, okay, what we're happy to do is mm. we'll fund a hundred percent of your build cost mm. as long as the total money that we've lent you to include the money on the original house and the mm. cost of the works is less than seven is less than seventy five percent of the GDV. Okay. So if you can get a hundred percent funding, you haven't got to put any more money in. So you've got your hundred and fifty thousand day one, and you know, for example, if the works on that property were four hundred thousand, mm. by the time you take into account your, you know, your cost of finance, your mm. stamp duty, legal selling fees, you might still make profits of anywhere from four hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand okay. pounds. That's good. And that's from your hundred and fifty thousand yeah. pounds you put in day one. Okay. So it's a longer game, mm. but. Even if that whole process took you, you know, three years, you're still making a hundred percent ROI because you're making yeah. one hundred and fifty thousand pounds per year if you make four hundred and fifty thousand mm. pounds over the three year term. Yeah, that's still yeah. You're right. It's still a good deal. For so three still, years. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of developers, you know, will, will kind of will focus on stuff without planning. They'll be looking at a twenty five minimum mm. percent as like their return on investment. Mm. So if you can do a hundred percent, you know, you're you're in the game, and it's crazy. It's a lot safer it's slower but then it's all about pipeline mm. so every time one's finishing you've got another one starting okay is that what you're trying to do you doing a bit of a slow one so yeah year. so on the yeah. on the um conversions mm. yeah they're a lot slow we build out okay. pipeline and we might have you know three or four going through planning that hopefully they sort of mm. tier finishing you know every sort yeah. of anywhere from six to nine months so you're kind of doing one build at a time so not overly stressing yourself and being overly leveraged mm. with debt um mm. from the funders okay and then at the same time doing the smaller projects, which are the ones I bought recently. Mm -hmm. So those four flats um, ventured out of South London a little bit. Okay, so finally. Because <laughs> yeah, that's what you said, that's they what you do. Me, yeah. They got me, they got me. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, ventured out. I mean, hmm, technically, I, so yeah, so one, very much South London, yeah. across very much south london brixton oh that's proper south then you've yeah. got fulham which is that's it's, southwest it's really west but it's across the river and you know when we cross that's the river, an expensive area to get in yeah well. yeah so yeah. Like, and then maidaville which is probably even more expensive yeah. as well so yeah that's the one that's proper like you know sort mm. of i think it's west yeah west yeah west so yeah so sort of but those ones are very much a case of in and out buying one bedroom flats either do an internal reconfiguration or a rear extension to make them two bedroom flats. Um, the uplift okay. can, you know, be very good. I think when we're looking at some of our target GDVs and looking at mm. similar properties that have sold in the area, the Maidaville one, for example, we bought for 460,000. I think if we were to just internally reconfigure it, you know, mm. so it, it wouldn't have that much meat on the bone. It's probably around 50,000 pounds profit. Um, okay. 
are selling at sort of six to six two five. Mm. But there's really good comparables on the road um, mm. with a rear extension to make you know your typical really nice open plan um, mm. luxury like sort of kitchen living room with bifold doors going out onto a private yeah. garden and they're selling for 850 so i think okay. you know probably looking at doing something like that wow yeah. and how long would that kind of project typically take you to so do I mean, that one because those are auction purchases yeah. from basically from it's a case of when you offer you exchange because you buy yeah. it on the same day. Okay. Then you've got 28 days from exchange to completion. So that's a month basically from first deciding to mm. buy the property to the property yeah. now being yours. From it being yours, let's assume we're going through planning. We're looking at sort of two months to get our planning decision. Okay. But in the meantime, we can still start some of the remedial work, some of the rewiring side because effectively... You know, if, if we're everything we're doing internally staying the same, regardless if we do the extension or not, and we're just seeing where stuff's going to be placed so we can start the rewire up until the point of the mm. extension, start the new plumbing, okay. do all of the, you know, if we've got to go back to brick and replaster and things like that, we can start that process. Okay. Um, I think overall was a refurbishment for somewhere with a re-extension, maybe looking at sort of, so two months for planning, three to four months for the works. Mm -hmm. Um then hopefully be on the market at the beginning of the six month period. Okay. Um, and then hopefully, you know, under offer mm. quite quickly mm -hmm. and be out sort of in a maximum of nine months. So that's the way we tend to structure the finance. Okay. In that we have nine months retained interest and nine months at a point where we're not worried about cost of finance and mm. having to service the loan. Okay. Wow. We normally have a term of 12 mm. months just to give us sort of that safety net of just in case a buyer pulls out, they, you mm. know, get a mortgage off a decline or there's any mm. issues. That's interesting, man. Ah, that's crazy. Uh, do you think that you'll do like all of those, you, you call in them smaller projects, do you think that you'll do them simultaneously? Yeah, so the goal okay. is to do all of those simultaneously. simultaneously. Okay, you're not going to put like too much in your, on your plate. No, no, nah. so I think, I think structure wise, yeah. Yeah. Like, in terms of taking on people, so I can't remember where we were last time we spoke in terms of mm. staffing, but so I've now got like um, a property manager. Okay. Um, oh, that's good. Based in the Philippines. That's mm. the VA. Really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it takes a lot of the day-to-day -day headache, mm -hmm. you know, for me in terms of uh, liaising and corresponding with tenants, yeah. and other landlords in the building, arranging repairs, okay. compliance, uh, tenancy renewals, and just little bits. And then I have an executive assistant who sort of deals with another element of the business, but also just helps me plan for the future. She's really good in in her space and then um a social media manager as well mm. uh and then just taking on like a yeah. new person just kind of to an administrative role mm. and then got a project manager so we've got more of a team structure in place okay that allows me to do things like to travel yeah. and have time mm. because it's just people in place to sort of help yeah is it any I don't know, did, did you have much of that structure last year? Or was it something like you thought, okay, I need this? Like, yeah, need like I think got yeah. to a point, and it's like now looking back on it, yeah. I, I don't know how I was doing all of that. Because there's <laughs> it, like even sometimes passion. when I'm talking to like some of the staff and they're like, they're overwhelmed and they're doing like like 20% of what I were doing and oh they can't God. do it on a full-time sort of, as a full-time role. Wow. So I think definitely, you know, if you'll speak to the tenants, probably a lot of processes have improved. Yeah. If, you know, even in terms of dealing with like solicitors or dealing mm. with artists, like they're getting responses a lot mm. quicker or getting them at Mad. reasonable times of the day. Mad. It just shows you like how important like having a team is, right? And I think this is, <laughs> you know what's crazy? That so many people, yeah, I feel like in business or setting up things, like they always think it's just about themselves, like ego, ego, ego. But a lot of it is that you just need the support from other stuff. You just need to be able to hand off stuff. You know, to sometimes you've got to accept that you're not as good as you think you are. <laughs> because like, I think for me, uh, like I sometimes feel like I'm a perfectionist. I'm like, no, I want it done my way. But sometimes my way is not as good as somebody else's way. And I've actually got to be able to say like, okay, you know, let me sort of like let go of the reins. Mm -hmm. Let me let someone kind of run with it. And obviously be there for oversight and make sure that it's, within whatever, whether it's the business culture or whether it's like the way you want things done, mm. but kind of allow someone to almost like curate the role and make it work for them and make it work for the customers that they're serving as well. Yeah, that's important, man. That's important. So, okay. So we're going to talk about interest rates because obviously that's biting, yeah. biting everything, everybody. And obviously we now heard our oh, recession mm. talks and blah, blah, blah. Um, so I guess obviously last, I think when we spoke, Interest rates were increasing. 
they definitely wasn't as bad from what I remember because we spoke like Feb, I think Feb or Jan. It was like yeah. Feb or Jan. No, I think they were still okay. Like, they were still okay, yeah. But yeah. towards the end, it just kept on increasing. They just, you know, mm -hmm. Bank of England just kept on increasing it. And I think now it's just kind of stayed. So I guess how did that like kind of have an impact, I guess, in, you know, in the property development world from your perspective? So like fr from a development perspective, um, I touched on it earlier when I spoke mm -hmm. about like build to rent accommodations. Yeah. That's like people that are doing maybe the BRR model, yeah. uh, you know, where they want to retain the property at the end by refinancing. In, in From a buy to let perspective, how much you can borrow is based on how much the property is going to make from a rental in comparison to what the cost of servicing that loan is. Mm. And as the cost of servicing the loan goes yeah. up, the amount banks are willing to lend goes down. So it meant it was less feasible for some people to retain assets and get the money back out to go again. Mm -hmm. Because I was always flipping, mm. I didn't necessarily see as much as an impact on that yeah. side. Also, because I generally buy like, you know, auction purchases or stuff that maybe has issues and I'm borrowing from bridges and a lot of bridges use private money where their returns aren't fixed to like Bank of England rates. Okay. that It's not, as much and when you look at you know the the cost of bridging it's gone up a bit but in comparison to the amount um the buy to let space or the or the, the residential mortgage space has gone up it hasn't gone up comparatively anywhere near as okay. fast wow so sometimes even when we look at deals because the cost of finance has gone up mm -hmm. in the buy to let space for people that used to maybe use a buyer to let as a way to get a property and do it with cheap finance, which isn't necessarily the compliant way to do things. It's actually sometimes by the time you pay like the product fee, which is what you pay for taking out the mortgage in the first mm -hmm. place. And then the redemption penalties, which is what you pay for returning the money early, basically, if you were to sell or refinance, it's sometimes actually cheaper to use like a bridging facility. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's obviously had an impact in terms of, monthly revenue as your interest rates go up and you mm -hmm. can't negotiate as good rates as you could before mm -hmm. but in the flipping space it hasn't affected things as drastically okay that's interesting okay so, so you mentioned a few things right so i'm uh, sorry i think yeah where it maybe has affected things yeah. is when you go to flip okay obviously you've got to find buyers yeah and buyers consumer confidence off the back of all of mm. those things have obviously dipped mm. um which means there were there's less buyers out there, which means it's yeah. more of a buyer's market, i.e. Whereas before, you know, it was a case of you put a property online, they were doing open houses on a Saturday and by Monday morning there's yeah. 10 offers and everyone's got to go best and finals and mm. the buyers are biting their hands off to get a property. <laughs> now it's more of a buyer's market in that, yeah. you know, buyers are able to say, mm, well, there's a lot of properties out there. Yeah. I like it, but, you know, you want 350. I think I'm willing to go to mm. 330. And okay. that's what a lot of people are seeing. One thing that I think has really helped me is I've always been big about sort of the standard of finish okay. end products. Like I've always wanted to create the nicest kitchens, nicest bathrooms, have a design theme that runs through the property that people just fall in love with. Okay. If, you know, you follow the page, you'll hear me talk about curb appeal. I'd spend the extra money to maybe do like the brick clean of the outside of the building, set so pops in comparison to all the neighbors. And when you've created a product that there isn't much comparison, it's take it or leave it. So whereas maybe okay. some people were struggling to sell, a lot of the units that I were doing were still going quite quickly because okay. when people were coming back and saying, oh, but there's like cheaper stuff, I'd say, then get the cheaper one. <laughs> this is not the cheap one. This is, I want to be Louis Vuitton. I don't want to have sales. <laughs> like, I want to be the person. This is the price. You get the, you get the exclusivity, you get the high quality, oh. you get the kind of the, the Kazi guarantee, and this is the price. I love that. I love that. That's crazy. Yeah, you want to be the Louis Vuitton of property. Mm -hmm. No, but it's true though. It's true. Because at the end of the day, right, like when, when you buy your property, it's either you do it yourself or you buy like something. That's why new builds go off the market because people don't want to be, at the end of the day, it's your home, isn't we it? We pay for convenience. Like if somebody exactly. gives you a finished product, you pay for it. It's the reason yeah. you pay more in a restaurant than you go to buy it, than you do it to buy the ingredients from Tesco's. Yeah. Because somebody's giving you the finished product that looks really nice. Yeah. It's mad. You mentioned something actually about bridging. Can you explain I think it was bridging you mentioned mm. that I was that I wanted to get explained. Can you like explain what that what that means? Like, so for people that don't bridging know. is so so you've got like your typical mortgage. Yeah. And typical mortgages sort of now anywhere from twenty five mm -hmm. to thirty five years is like a standard term of a remortgage and you know, you have an element of interest and you're repaying it for a residential property. Yeah. 
you then got to buy to let mortgage, which again, these are all long term finance, whereas bridging is a short term lending facility where you need to have an exit. You know, they're, they're not going to keep you on that product for any longer than generally about sort of two, three years at a push. Okay. Some of them as short as, you know, six months. So you would use bridging if you're buying something that, you know, needs work, buying something you're going to add value to, yeah. and then you're going to switch the product uh, to a long-term loan or sell the product at the end of it, sell the, you know, the, the property at the end. Okay, cool. Now, brilliant, brilliant answer. Thank you. I think that's going to definitely explain because obviously it's a bit of a different term and I know that's more familiar in the property investing uh, mm -hmm. development term. Okay, so obviously you've, I'm sure you had conversations like, you know, other property developers and property investors. Mm -hmm. I guess what, what kind of property strategies are people most talking about that they're looking to do in 2024? Obviously we, we've talked about yeah. flipping. Is there like anything else that? Uh, yeah, there's, there's, I think... There's loads of property strategies that work really well for different people for different reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, there has been more of an emergence from like, you know, areas outside of London, whereas London was typically like everyone wants to get into London. Now, some people are like saying, I don't actually want to get into London. You know, I really like the yields. So the yield is like your percentage return that you get from your investment, mm -hmm. investing in the north. And it works really well for them. And you've got a lot of people building very large portfolios very quickly outside of London with smaller capital requirements. Mm -hmm. That's been a focus. And some people believe that, you know, the capital appreciation is going to outstrip that of London in some of these areas mm -hmm. just because of the potentials where you can still, you know, pick up houses in some areas for yeah. 60,000 pounds. They're a lot more affordable. I think it's just, do they have that level of desirability that London has? And do people really, you know, I don't want to pick out an area because you're going to insult someone, but do people really want to live in Poole or Dudley or what's mm. the draw? Mm. I think you need the infrastructure to go there as well to match the fact that the house price is yeah. relatively cheap. You've then got sort of more what you would say, they don't have to be starter strategies, but they're mm. strategies that have lower capital requirements. So you've got rent to rent, mm. rent to rent, which is effectively where you rent the property from a landowner or, or from a landlord, and then you rent that out to somebody else now that yeah. could be as a hmo a house of multiple occupancy that could be as serviced accommodation like airbnb or booking.com that's really popular because you need a lot less money you don't have to buy the house you just have to have your first month's rent deposit you know maybe money for furnishing to tie mm. the property up depending on the model that you're going for yeah. and compliance that's been really popular particularly because you know there are some landlords that have had a lot of stress from interest rates going up and they don't want the stress of maybe having any void periods and those guaranteed rent providers and rent to rent providers would take that stress away from That's the true. landlord. Yeah. Also in the space of lower barrier to entry, there's deal sourcing. Okay. Yeah. And I think for me, when people talk to me about, oh, what strategy should I get into? What should I do? I, I always push people towards deal sourcing and it's not something that I teach or do anything. I say, look, it's something that I would advise you try your hand at because Number one, there's loads of really bad deal sources out there. Like it's a space that if you're good, you'll shine. Mm. People will see the difference. And everybody wants a good, every property investor is willing to pay for a good deal because they're going to make money, you make money. It's a win-win, I think. And if you can become good at that, mm. firstly, you're preparing yourself for when you're in a position to be able to go and do those deals yourself. Secondly, if you're finding people like myself or other more established property developers deals, they're a lot more likely to maybe want to work with you, work closely with you. You can learn from their skills. You can kind of like bounce, bounce and learn off their ideas yeah. and what they've, they've learned over time. Also, you're building relationships. Mm. When you bring these deals, some of them might be so good that you're like, look, I'm not willing to sell it, but I'll bring the deal to you and you bring the funding so you can meet with investors that are potentially yeah. going to invest in you because they can say, well, this guy, he knows his mm. stuff. He's been able to isolate you know a really good deal he's been able to negotiate with the landlord or landowner or the agents and be able to get it for a good price yeah i do think you know you've got to look at compliance and protecting yourself and making sure your contracts are good because that you know that bit of paper is going to what's going to protect you and make sure that you get paid yeah um, i think that's a good space to be in there's been changes in you know legislation legislative changes also always offer opportunity mm. whether they're for the good or the bad yeah. there's always going to be when there's change there's an opportunity to make money so it's been talked about and it's gone through parliament now and it's not law but it's looking like it's going to come into place which is the leaseholder reform act now um, for those that are not familiar like there's two different types of properties there's freehold and there's leasehold generally speaking 
um, leasehold properties, you know, are, are flats, but there are leasehold houses as well. Yeah. Um, and there's a number of things this act's going to do. But effectively, when you've got a leasehold title, you have you own your property for a certain number of years. Um, and when it gets below a certain amount, it gets expensive to extend your lease. Mm. But what they've said is that they're going to basically make it, they're going to remove what are called the marriage value, which is a value attributed to extending the lease based on the value okay. um, when your lease drops below 80 years. Mm. So a strategy of buying shorter lease properties with that potential legislative change coming into place is a strategy that people are adopting. Oh, swear down. Okay, because the cost of that is going to go it's down. It's going to go like, down. So okay, it's like, obviously, you're, crazy. it's going to be dependent on, yeah. you know, on elections and who mm. comes, who, you know, is in power uh, because it's not law mm. at the moment, but it's looking like, it's okay. going to happen to some degree, depending on... And there's loads of different things that are going to change and intricacies. Mm. So if anybody interested, I definitely recommend looking into the changes yeah. in the leaseholder reform act. Got changes in permitted development rights coming into play as well. So there's, again, these are talks. They're not set in stone yet, but there's talks about... Basically, permitted development is when mm. you can get a certain type of planning without having to ask for it. So you're allowed really? to do it, you just put in the application. So for example, right now you can convert mm. your house into a HMO, like a house like um, a house of multiple occupancy, mm. as long as it's less than six rooms under permitted development. You can do a loft conversion with a dormer for a semi-detached or detached property under committed development. You can do a rear extension up to certain mm. sizes. And so these are just generally things that increase the size and footprint mm. of a house. But one thing they're talking about bringing in is mm. bringing in permitted development rights to convert a house into two flats under PD. Okay. So if you assume that you, know, you can buy houses yeah. in a certain area for 400,000 and those flats are selling for 300,000 each, it's potentially an uplift. Mm. So people are, targeting you know flats like that to say look there may be some potential there mm. and lastly um in terms of changes there's class ma which is like a commercial class um and you know commercial to residential conversions again it means it's a permitted development right to convert class ma which is typically like mm. offices um into residential homes yeah which have a higher value but they've also made changes in class ma which is at the moment there's a limited amount of floor space that you can yeah. convert, but they're taking that limit off. There's also a three month rule, which means the property has to be vacant for three months prior to putting in the application. Okay. They're actually gonna remove that three month time right. constraint, which means, again, it means you can get going a lot quicker, which means some deals that may have not have stacked before now stacks. I think being up to date with current changes, or like current legislation and also potential changes, if you can, preempt and an earlier adopter in a market those people always make the most money like do you remember fitbits yes the, oh yeah if you were the first guy to import fitbits yeah you was making yeah. thousands of pounds a yeah. day if you buy them at the end when they're sort of fizzling out all of the profits have been eroded because now everybody sees it mm. and in business a lot of the time you make your money from seeing things that other people miss yeah that's a good point. And I was going to just say that, that this is like the importance of education, being mm. having this education, because it's funny that you were talking about leasehold and all this stuff. I, I think I heard about the leasehold one, but because I am not that well versed in the area, mm. I couldn't see that opportunity <laughs> for people like you, people like Alfred or the other like, you know, fantastic property investors on 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 social media. You guys are so in, in the loop. Yeah. Any little thing that happens, like you said, you hear about the opportunity you guys are in there already yeah. by the time we hear about it it's almost too late yeah you know i think that's where i was very much when we last spoke mm. like you know the education space mm. and stuff like that was somewhere that i was like look i don't really know where i sit in it yeah because i'm always feeling like look i want to be a property developer first and mm. anything else second um but you know i've had obviously a lot of people that over the time of supported me along my journey whether it just be through liking a post sharing it and i know that i've indirectly supported them like i meet people outside that are like i watched this video and it helped me buy my first house and i've like probably had that like over a hundred times yeah so and people were constantly saying oh can i you know mentor can like can you mentor me or can i shadow you or how can i work alongside you but because i'm busy i couldn't facilitate that and that's one of the reasons why i sort of started like my own community effectively mm. Um, and it is chargeable, but it's mm. to kind of help people yeah. within the space because like, let's not get it wrong. Property is expensive. And Very. Because yeah. property is expensive, mistakes are equally expensive. Mm. So if I can create an infrastructure that can stop you making those costly mistakes, yeah. 
um, you know, the, the cost of being part of the community becomes very marginal. Yeah. Yeah, actually, you know what? Because I actually had questions about it because I saw uh, that you posted on Instagram that um, I think by the time people listen to this, I think it might be too late. Yeah. But still, let's let's talk about it because you, you posted about, you know, I think 20 more people are going to yeah. be um, accepted into your community. So I guess, like, what what is the community? What, what, what will people... Um, gain yeah. from yeah, it and what can they expect yeah benefits, like if you're paying yeah, for that's it, the main thing right? I've got yeah. all the benefits yeah. otherwise yeah. it's not going to be of value yeah. so look, I looked at, and I, I try and always like reverse engineer things I mm. think what would I have wanted early on like yeah. what would help me and so I said look you know obviously people always talk about the dream team and support structure and also just having people that have done it and been there so it's very simplistic in that we have our WhatsApp group for all of our members um, so you benefit from my experience, but also the experience of, you know, anywhere from 50 yeah. to 100 other members collectively of hundreds of years of experience. Yeah. Alongside that, within the group, we also have our panel of experts, which includes an architect, an accountant, a solicitor, wow. a structural engineer, a project manager, a high net worth um, EA a mortgage broker and a estate agent. So these are all people that have been in their fields for 10 years plus. And they're there as kind of like a sounding board, like when you've got questions yeah. to say like, oh, what do you think of this? What about that? Do you think this is feasible? Like, yeah. and But also the group itself works as an ecosystem to be able to kind of give you the confidence to go and do your next deal. So yeah. I use it myself as a sounding board, for example, <laughs> like when I'm like, oh, I'm looking at this. Yeah. Like I think one day I wanted to put, it was just something random. Like I was like, oh, I'm looking at this mirror. Do you think it's going to work? And everyone was like, nah, that's rubbish. And I was like, all right, cool. You know what I mean? I've got to trust the group. Yeah. yeah but um, yeah, so like it worked that. really well as a yeah. sounding board, but also for bringing people together for mm. collaboration. Like London's expensive. So for example, sometimes two people can come together and do a joint venture. Or sometimes there might be a large auction lot that maybe contains three flats. So it's a house being sold with three flats already in it. Yeah. And people can group together and say, you know what, let's do it collectively because we can't buy it individually. But collectively, we have the resources to be able to go out there and buy it. And then sometimes it just pulls together somebody that's got the money, but no expertise mm. and somebody with the expertise and, and no money. But also everybody has like independent things that they're doing maybe outside mm. of property and got a guy in there that's um he's, he's like doing really really well in his business and he does like aircon it's like you know he was just someone just randomly asked oh, does anyone know where i can get an air conditioning unit from he was like to me look from that from that call out in the group we fitted some aircon you know we made sort of thirty thousand pounds that's paid for my me being in the group for wow. the next 50 years so i'm i'm good i'm here for life now so oh, that's crazy you know and i think there's loads of things of why just that when we We've got some amazing success stories. Mm. Like one of our youngest members, um, he joined the group at 19 and bought his first buy to let at 19. Whoa. <laughs> That's got, crazy. Uh, Ex-footballer, um, had to retire early due to injury, did his first ever deal in property and yes, yeah, did six figures in his first deal. Wow. Got a lady that had been bouncing around different groups, um, hadn't done a deal, had been trying to do a deal for 12 months and just last month she closed on her first deal wow. i went to go and see it the other day and i was like why are you not buzzing like this deal's sick mm -hmm. like i would i haven't told her i said look this deal's so good that i'll underwrite your deal <laughs> <laughs> but i wouldn't take the offer because it's actually a really good deal yeah so i was like Man. but underwriting is basically saying like look i'll garrett say for example she's mm -hmm. like i think the property is going to be worth 500 i'm like look i'm so sure that it's going to be worth 525 mm -hmm. i'll guarantee you that it's worth 525 mm -hmm. so if it sells for 512 i'll give you the thirteen thousand. wow if it sells for more than 525 mm -hmm. we split the difference of what okay. it sells for above <laughs> i was like but don't take the offer because it's going to sell for more than that <laughs> That's crazy man it sounds it sounds good it sounds like a like a a, a group like a good group and that's the thing, right? You got to make the most of it, right? If you're going to be in a group, you got to network with people, you got to speak to people. And you do, but it's weird. Like some people, yeah. because like, I do like, we do our check-ins and mm. stuff with our members. And sometimes I'm like, yo, like you haven't really spoken. Is everything all right? I haven't heard from you. Mm. They're like, yeah, no, I'm just soaking it in. Like I'm just, some people Fair. are in a place where they're like, look, right now, yeah, everything that I learned just through reading the conversations, mm -hmm. I'm picking up on, I'm noting down because all of these things that I'm picking up are going to save me from making that mistake. Yeah. So somebody, for example, when we're talking about auction purchases mm. and somebody explaining the special conditions and what to look out for when it comes to additional costs in auctions, mm. that just literally 20 seconds of reading part yeah. of it might save you £6,000 at a further yeah. auction purchase. You know, that we know what, maybe that's not one to go for. And I think our retention rates are like, because I always said, look, I just want it to be, if it doesn't represent good value for money for you, mm. you shouldn't be in there. Mm. 
But I think even though we've got no subscription, this mm. monthly rolling contract, I think our retention rate's over eighty five percent. Okay, that's good. Members from when they first joined. So. Okay, wow. So how much is it? Like, uh, is it per month? Is so it? It's one hundred and ninety nine pounds a month. That's. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm not, okay, I let say, me not say. It, look, okay, so do you know what I'm thinking? That's expensive. No, or that's cheap. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think. But well, I, I, yeah, yeah. But for what? For me, yeah, it's like. I wanted to make it in a way where obviously yeah. it's... Because some people say that's expensive. Some people say that's cheap. I mean, so our house is £200 a month and you, they don't give you yeah. no But expertise. it's all like, for me, it's like... And I get told a lot of time, like, my, if I speak to my ear, she's like, because this is cheap. And I say, listen, <laughs> like, I want it because my whole mm. starting ethos when I joined social media, when I started talking mm. to people about my journey was making property investment more accessible. Yeah, okay. And like, don't get me wrong, I have higher ticket stuff. So if somebody wants me to mentor them one-to-one, -one, mm. that's going to cost you like a thousand pounds a month or 1200 pounds yeah. a year because at the time yeah. I'm going to have to commit to mm. you. But even with that, it's like, I wouldn't mentor anybody that I don't think I can make them four times the amount of money yeah. in a year. And yeah. they're ready to do that. Mm. So it's more of an application process. Okay. But from a group structure, it's just, you know, that community feel of, and you're right, like it is cheap for a number of reasons. Like yeah. my hourly rate's 300 pounds. Mm. My architect's hourly rate's 250. Mm. My lawyer's hourly rate's 300. Like, you know, the, so all of these people's mm. time is really expensive. And that's not to say that mm. they're going to sit down with you and answer every question. But mm. what they can do is, for example, you can say, look, like, ah, oh, I've just seen this property. Do you think it's mortgageable? Yeah. The broker might turn around and say like, top level, I think it is but sit down with me. And obviously then, yeah, this bringing them business, it's a win-win for people involved in the group as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. No, that's that's definitely very good value. Because the way I'm seeing it, right, you said that, oh, you got somebody that's done six figures, somebody else made 30 grand. Yeah, like, they already made their money back Somebody else, way like, over. Like, even just through my contacts, like, yeah. somebody else needed a kitchen. I was like, oh, let me speak to my people. I think I've got yeah. some extra display stuff coming. They were about to spend £9,000 on a kitchen. I got them for £3,000. Yeah. Exactly. Like, so they've already people, saved it. Yeah, they've they've already made their money back. And I yeah. think that's the thing. Like a lot of things are pay to play, <coughs> but if you utilize, if you invest in yourself, then you make that money back. Yeah, yeah. That's how you gotta see it. Like you're you're spending to make more in yeah. some way or develop in some way. So I guess actually, you know, on that, because I saw your post and it's very popular. I think there's a, there was a lot more than 20 people commenting on that post. I don't know if you yeah. checked, so I don't know how you're going to yeah, choose no, you the 20. No, Good luck. So how, we, how we do is obviously, yeah. in terms of obviously, this is, I look at business models that work okay. and stuff that's successful. And you know, like you just, you haven't always got to reinvent the wheel. Mm. And I, I never wanted to just have a button where people could just click at any point in time mm. and join the group because then they're not going to understand the culture of the group and they're just going to join and they're yeah. not really going to be catered to. So I was like, I want to, you know, four times a year in induct new members. Okay. They get a proper induction. They get mm. to understand the culture of the group. Yeah. They get to kind of, you know, we know that we're going to have you know, site visit days soon after for them to meet people and have that networking opportunity. The way that we structure it is that like we have our mailing list, mm -hmm. you can join the links in my bio at any time, but then the group will open on the 21st of okay. February. However, anybody on the mailing list will get an early access code to be able to join on the 20th. Okay. So from it opens, it's like when the Yeezys used to drop. Mm. You just go there, you sign up, mm. you're in, that's it. You, you know, okay. you're, you're, you're good to go. And yeah, we're going to have those slots. And, and the other reason why I've only got that many slots is mm. I always want the group to be manageable. Like mm. I don't just want to add too many people yeah. in and then it dilute the quality of it because mm -hmm. it's, it's a quality over quantity thing for me mm -hmm. okay cool so you said 21st actually this ah oh, nah now nah, we're, we're gonna be over this, yeah because this episode is gonna come out on the 26th i was just looking at the calendar 26 so it, you said every quarter so that the but next it time will, if you know yeah it, just it may they may not sell out and say it will still be open okay until i believe the 28th okay i'm cool, right cool, cool, so cool. potentially if you're if you're listening on the 20 yeah if you're listening on the 26th, um, just, yeah, go check. Yeah. There'll be a link and you can see if okay. it's sold out or if there's any slots left available. No, because I know people, I know definitely people will be interested in it yeah. for sure. Because I've got like, friends. Yeah. Like, I, I, even, I don't even <laughs> let friends join. Like, I've got friends that I've gone to school with and they're like, oh, I want to join. And I'm like, yeah, it so opens on the 20th. <laughs> also, congratulations, man, on the YouTube channel. I saw that uh, you may you got to 10K <laughs> subscribers. I, know that's a, hard I don't graph, think people man. understand it. That's a big deal. It's a hard graph, man. YouTube, YouTube. is hard. Hard. Very hard. It's hard, right? YouTube's hard, um, you know, but yes, yeah, so I was happy about it. Little things yeah. that uh, don't make me mad happy. Like, you mm. see, get it. I don't think people understood. Like, I was gassed. I was literally like that day <laughs> that when I was at like 
980. Yeah. I was like, nah, come on, man. We could do it today. I'm watching it. Oh, I said, yeah, I was I was on there the second yeah. that subscriber logged in at the 10,000. I was like, we've done it. That's what, that's what no I'm one better unsubscribe right now. Man. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> nah, nah, they won't do that. They won't yeah. do that like that, man. Congratulations, man. So uh, talk a little bit about your YouTube channel. Like, what kind of content do you so post on there? And YouTube, what do you talk about? Yeah. YouTube uh, has got so I, I locked down. I remember lockdown when no one could mm. even a lot of people were on yeah. Clubhouse and Instagram mm. Live. So it started as just like me repurposing the Instagram lives that I was doing. But obviously okay. they're vertical content, YouTube's horizontal. Mm. Um and we've tailored like some really good content. So we had something called uh, Property Insiders, which is where we kind of shot documentaries about five different uh, people of colour in like the property space. Uh, but now we focus on, so we've got the podcast that comes out mm. on a weekly basis and then also development tours where I go and see either my own sites yeah. or go and see sites of other developers just to wow. give you insights into how things happen. So at the moment, um, and these will still be coming out by the time this podcast comes out, so mm. definitely check this out. I used one of my recent projects, which was somewhere I bought as a repossession, mm. um, repossessed, I don't know for what reason, but at the same time they were growing weed in there. So obviously gone in oh, there, man. so it's basically converting like a weed house into two luxury flats and and basically it's a four part series just kind of taking you through the whole process mm. so you really get to see the journey of that development mm. from I like that being yeah. the weed house to being back to bare bricks and i think that's the thing of property development it gets a lot worse before it gets a lot better because mm. it probably looked better as a weed house than it did halfway through my <laughs> development when i'm missing ceilings i got no floors the joists are all exposed yeah. um so that that's that's nice um so we then got the podcast and i've i've, I've kind of relocated so i've got like a content room in my house now so i'm gonna okay. start doing more just very simplistic yeah. like me sitting in front of camera might be my phone yeah. you know we've got the iphone 14s now so okay I'm yeah they, he's a1 yeah they, they're, they're basically mad, they're yeah. basically a camera um so just doing that. and it's explaining maybe some more basic stuff that i take for granted so the question of actually let me speak in detail about what is a bridging loan mm -hmm. how are you able to buy your first house yeah uh, what do you need to do to prepare, you know, what are the pitfalls of a buy-to-let mortgage, what to look out for at auction, yeah. what's the difference between, you know, this and that and just stuff like that. So if anybody's got some stuff that, you know, mm -hmm. they want me to do, um, you know, some some content about, I'm sure you can use the comment section. I'll make sure I check yeah. it out and you can redirect me and I'll, I'll get some good content out in that space as well. Because I'm definitely going to, I'm going to smash DJ. I said like, you know, once you do yeah. one thing, once you get to that milestone of like 10,000, yeah. like really the next one's 100K. Exactly. It's just you can't, just you can't time, really man. do 20. You got to yeah. just, the next, the next yeah. real milestone. <laughs> like 20K is cool and 50K is yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, 100K. 100 yeah. 100K that. is a mad one. And that's the thing with YouTube because it, it does take long, but it stacks. Yeah. It like stacks with your old videos. They're still it's, good content. Yeah. Like people will go back. Still to watch it. So that's yeah. like, like I enjoy watching like people like the side men mm. and care side. But yeah. See, I might watch their new videos, mm. but if I see a title that looks good, I'm still gonna go back and watch exactly. something from four years ago. Yeah. It's mad, it's mad, it's mad. So tell the people where they can uh, find you, obviously, if they want to connect to you, you know, check out your content, something yeah, like that. Yeah, so I definitely recommend best place to connect with me is Instagram mm -hmm. because either I'm on there or admin, PA, VL, all on there. So you're definitely going to get a response yeah. um, on Instagram, which is uh, property by Kazi, so K-A-Z-Y. Mm -hmm. um, YouTube is exactly the same. Same with a TikTok. Um, it's got the repurposing a lot of the you know, longer form content into short form because yeah. I know a lot of people prefer to digest their content in a in a shorter form uh, way at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it's mad. Yeah, TikTok, TikTok is definitely the next place because I've got like my following. Funny enough, my following is bigger on mm. TikTok than Instagram, but it, my TikTok account's newer than my Instagram account. Yeah, like and then, TikTok is way easier. Yeah. to build a follow. Yeah, like, you, you just kind of like if you're really into just building. Yeah, in, yeah. but I think. The only thing that I'd say, like, with mm. TikTok is, like, there's a difference between, fo mm. like, followers and engaged users. Yeah, it's not. Because you'll thing, just follow yeah. something because I want to see the part two. Yeah. I don't really want to see any more yeah. of, the, of the content. But yeah. but from speaking to people that actually work at TikTok, mm. TikTok has some massive plans this year. And they want to monetize okay. in the same way and make the creator fund really good in the same way that YouTube is. Okay. They're actually transitioning into yeah. 
horizontal content and long form content on oh, TikTok. Oh, that's um, so interesting. You, okay. Again, about being an early adopter. Yeah. I think long form content on TikTok yeah. is going to be one of the ways to go. Yeah, yeah. Because I know it's already, I think, five minutes. I think it's 10 now. Is it 10? Okay. Yeah, they to 10. Wow. They're proper, they're proper getting. Yeah, I no, mean, they're yeah. They're going to be YouTube competition. Like, yeah. That's their goal to be yeah. a competition for like all digital streaming platforms. Wow. Things. I mean, honestly, the content on there is is addictive. Like, yeah. <laughs> like there was a, a study that said like uh, a lot of um, so even uh, what's the they like Gen Z but like slightly mm. younger actually use TikTok over YouTube as a search engine. Yeah, yeah, so but like, I, I yeah. want to find a nice restaurant. TikTok's gonna be way more comfortable. Yeah, oh, sorry, I over Google. Yeah, it's funny you say that because. <laughs> <laughs> I, I checked I checked like the restaurant, for, like, there. restaurant Yeah that's where I went to TikTok. I went on TikTok <laughs> yeah, Holidays yeah. and like Beach clubs yeah. TikTok I want to see people yeah. At the vibe I it's don't want to I don't want to read yeah. About the vibe I want to yeah. be engrossed in you it like, Show it. me the vibe Yeah it's crazy It's crazy actually When you say Like when you say that Because that is our behaviour Right now We Like you said We want to see It's no longer TripAdvisor We're seeing actual video of people Yeah because we know That experience. TripAdvisor Like you know eh, it can just be you're just reading it. Yeah, people can buy reviews, or whatever. But when you really see people that you know enjoying yeah. a spot, and you say, "Okay, cool, yeah. this is this is where I'm gonna man. be at." It's mad, man. Thank you so much, bro. I really appreciate you coming onto the podcast a second time. It's great to catch up with you and see what you're doing yeah. as well, man. And yeah, keep it keep it going, man. I definitely want to have another conversation with you. 2025, right? It sounds weird to say 2025, but I know, I know, yeah, I know. mad, man. Good luck to you. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? We're already in February, but obviously, you know what I'm saying? Like January was a tough one. Went in harder in February. It looks like February is going good. Hopefully, the rest of the months are going to yeah. go well as well. So, yeah, appreciate you coming on the podcast. Do you have any final words for, I guess, the watchers and listeners? I'd just say, man, just try and try and enjoy what you do. Like, it's it's good, you know, and I understand we live in a capitalist society. The money's important. Everything's important. But if you enjoy what you do, I feel like everything else will come as a byproduct. Like, and people can see that. People can tell when you're genuine and when you actually like so when i'm speaking to people and they can tell you know what like this is someone who loves what they do i feel like it's a lot easier to sell to them they they want to buy from you they want to do business with you so just try and find that passion point and just stick with it and, and you'll be a success love that thank you so much bro appreciate you thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the podcast we'll see you next week's episode